Quantum entanglement in condensed matter physics. First of all, what is quantum entanglement? As you can guess, it's an exclusive property of quantum mechanics. When two particles are entangled, it is not possible to describe each particle individually. We need a global description using a combination of possible states of these two particles. Thus, entanglement is nothing more than a special case of quantum superposition. But now, what is this superposition? In quantum mechanics, the total state of a system can be a combination of some of its possible states, being the system in all of those states at the same time. The reality of quantum superposition has been tested in many experiments. The reason for our lack of experience with superposition in everyday objects is that the environment interacts with the object, reducing the superposition to a unique component. Now that we know what superposition is, let's describe the entanglement by means of an example. Our entangled system consists of a superposition of two electrons with opposite spins. We could have either the left one with a spin up and the right one down, or just the other way around. Being a superposition, we know that both situations happen at the same time. To be correct, we wouldn't know in which direction the spin is pointing until we measure, so it could be any direction, being the spin sum always zero. We will represent this with interrogation signs. So now we have our two electrons entangled. Imagine I now separate both electrons as much as I want, even light years, without breaking the entanglement. If I manage to do that, my friend Bob could now measure the spin of the left electron in one direction. Although the electron is now in both states at the same time, the result can only be either up or down for the direction he measured. If he got up, the spin of the right electron would automatically be defined to down, as the total spin must be zero. If now Alice measured the spin of her electron in a direction of her choice, she would get her up or down with the corresponding probability for this situation as predicted by the laws of quantum mechanics. Let me insist on this idea. If Bob had measured the spin in another direction, and got the new up, the right electron would automatically be in the new down state, and when Alice makes her measurement, the probabilities of getting one result or another would now be different from the previous case. This means that the measurement of one particle has an effect on the measurement of the other one, no matter how far apart both particles are. Amazing, right? So this is entanglement, a special case of quantum superposition in which the measurement of one part of the system instantaneously affects the rest of the system. Alain Aspect confirmed the reality of quantum entanglement with his experiments on entangled photons. Now, where can we find entanglement in condensed matter physics? In fact, it is quite common in the field. Our system of entangled electrons in a total spin zero state can be found in superconductors. Materials like mercury, lead or aluminum, when cooled down to a few kelvin, become superconductors and start conducting electricity with no resistance. They do so precisely because the electrons in the material team up in Cooper pairs, becoming entangled pairs of electrons in a total spin zero state. In 1957, Bardeen, Cooper and Schrieffer formulated the BCS theory to explain superconductivity. To see how it works, we get inside a superconductor. This net represents a layer of atoms of the superconductor. The BCS theory explains how two electrons with opposite momenta can interact attractively through the lattice. The passing of an electron through the material deforms the lattice creating a region with a higher positive charge density. Consequently, the other electron feels a tiny effective attraction to the first one. When this happens collectively, a phase transition occurs from a normal metal phase to the superconducting phase, characterized by a condensate of these Cooper pairs. Cooper pairs move unimpeded through the material because the interactions that lead to resistance become forbidden for a range of energy called superconducting gap. In the last years, groups of researchers have found a way to separate the electrons of a Cooper pair without breaking the entanglement. A device called Cooper Pair Splitter uses the Cooper pairs of a superconductor and separates the entangled electrons storing each one in a quantum dot. These quantum dots are nanostructures which can confine electrons. Instead of both electrons going inside a single quantum dot, they would prefer to take separate ways to minimize repulsion. This device is useful for the study of Cooper pairs in other kinds of superconductivity and could also find application in quantum information. This is the line of work of the SE2ND project, an international research group financed by the European Union.